Following defeat of the Tidon Task Force in the Great Wastelands, information was obtained through the capture of Tidon vessels. What became apparent to Kushan High Command was that the Tidon had built a network of facilities in strategic locations that would be able to defeat the mothership should it approach its final destination. This network, however, was not perfect. A number of gaps were present, either in locations of extreme interference or in areas of space that were otherwise problematic with sensory equipment. One such gap was identified, known as the Diamond Shoals, and it was decided to exploit this in order to further the mothership's mission, the Crusade for Higara. This gap in the Tidon sensor field was not without its dangers, however, itself being an area of space fraught with danger via the high concentration of asteroids and other natural stellar debris. Because of the nature of the mothership's hyperdrive systems, it was not possible to simply jump through this location, so this risk was unavoidable. During the mothership's traverse through the Diamond Shoals, Kushan pilots flew in advance of the mothership, using their weaponry to clear any dangerous object in the mothership's path. Kif's Samtel mining teams also took this time to mine these dangerous objects, giving them invaluable experience with mining dangerous areas of space. Although some asteroids got through, causing moderate damage, the mothership, after a drawn out sublight burn through the system, was able to reach the safety on the other side, where they once again encountered the Bentuzi. As was evident through the last encounter with this enigmatic alien race, the Bentuzi were not hostile to the Kushan, and as was becoming custom, a trade offer was made between these two races, resources in return for drone technology used in a frigate-sized vessel. The Bentuzi also offered a jaded warning in regards to the Kushan's next waypoint on their journey. No one returns from the Garden of Kadesh. Finalising this trade and bidding farewell to the Bentuzi, the mothership spilled up its hyperdrive, ready for the Kushan's next waypoint on its great journey. As the mothership traversed the non-place between existence, it arrived at the next waypoint, the Garden of Kadesh. This great nebula was affluent in the resources needed for the Kushan war effort. It was decided to take some time at this place to exploit the wealth in a preparation for the eventual battle that would face the Kushan. This area was so high in energy emissions that Kushan's sensory arrays were receiving friendly contact signals from deeper into the garden. These interferences were regarded as problematic should any enemy choose to attack the Kushan. It was thought that the garden was devoid of hostile encounters, but the Bentuzi's warning offered a contradiction to this belief. Their assessment of the garden was, in fact, wrong. A vessel approached the Kushan fleet, offering a simulation with their civilization. Their alternative was destruction. Every effort was made by Kushan diplomatic teams to offer a solution to these unknown natives of the garden. It seemed that the Kadesh, the life forms that inhabited the garden, saw this great nebula as a holy place, a place not for outside feet to tread upon or prick fruit from its stellar branches. Either you became one with the garden, or you were destroyed. Massive concentrations of Kadeshi vessels flew upon the guns of the Kushan as they ripped gaping holes in the Kushan fleet. Their weapons and technology was by far superior to the Kushan, their guns biting hard into Kushan strike crafts and capital ships, and their hulls almost immune to Kushan weapons. Within a matter of moments, the Kadesh heavily damaged the Kushan capital flotilla. These vessels were particularly vulnerable to Kadesh attacks. Kushan strike craft grouped up on singular Kadeshi targets, taking many hundreds of rounds for Kushan pilots to defeat each vessel. It seemed, however, that the Kadesh had one weakness. The vessels had no internal power source and relied on refueling pods stationed to the rear of Kadeshi lines in order to replenish their weapons. As Kadeshi vessels pulled from combat, the Kushan pilots began to exploit this vulnerability and either hit their fuel sources or hit the strike craft as they lined up to refuel. The Kushan 
decided to withdraw from this conflict, it taking a massive toll on their strike craft and capital ships. There was one problem with this however, the Kadesh had the ability to inhibit the hyperspace capabilities of the mothership and they were doing just that. This inhibitor field was emanating from the source of new Kadeshi vessels, a mothership class vessel that was directing Kadeshi attacks on the Kushan. It was heavily armed and armoured, having forward facing ion accelerators that would deal massive damage. The Kushan needed to remove this vessel if they wanted to leave this place and although Karen Sajet was weary of creating another enemy, there was no other way. Kushan strike craft and capital vessels descended upon their mothership, taking massive casualties from the defending Kadesh as they desperately emptied their payloads into the Kadeshi mothership. After receiving massive damage from the withering barrages of the Kushan forces, the Kadeshi mothership were drawn for the fight leaving the Kushan to gather their surviving vessels and seek exit via the hyperspace corridor. It seems that as the Kushan jumped deeper into the garden, the Kadesh had laid a trap for them, hyperdicting the mothership as they moved through the garden. It seems that the Kadesh were determined once more to approach the Kushan. They offered the same deal as they did before once they pulled the mothership out into reality, join them or be destroyed. Karen Sajet attempted reasoning with the Kadesh, explaining their fate in an attempt to make the Kadesh understand why they were here. This plea fell upon deaf ears and once again Kadeshi swarms piled on top of the Kushan fleet. This time though, as pilots had been given a brief moment to reflect on the previous battle, High Command funneled resources into ships that were more efficient in dealing with the Kadeshi attacks. Multi-gun corvette wings were able to deal heavy damage to the Kadeshi Swarmer strike craft as the destroyer and frigate flotilla offered their guns for heavier targets. The Kadesh during these attacks deployed advanced Swarmer models and multi-beam frigates into their battle with the Kushan and these vessels would cause massive casualties in the Kushan rank and file. The occupants of the garden had deployed three mothership sized vessels that were equipped with hyperspace inhibitor fields encircling the Kushan mothership and ensuring that they could not escape. So afraid were the Kadesh of the outside learning of the wealth of the garden that they could not let the Kushan escape even if they sympathised with them. Kushan High Command once more ordered that the ships that contained the hyperspace inhibitors be destroyed. One by one, Kushan knocked out these motherships at high cost. Kiv Samtel mining endeavours ran combat mining operations, salvaging the wreckages of these motherships whilst under immense fire. The last target that was halting the Kushan on their journey was located almost on top of a consistent sensory mirage. Like before, the Kushan sensors were picking up false readings of friendly vessels but what was different from the other readings and this one was that this contact was consistent. Approaching their last target, it became apparent that the Kadesh were not so alien after all. A ship was found and the ship was identical to the Kartoba, the ship found on Karak that brought the Kushan to their old homeworld many years ago. It seems that the Kadesh originated from the migrant fleet that fled Higara long ago. They broke away from their brethren in an attempt to seek solace in the cloak of the nebula. Over time, they began to take any vessel that ventured into what they began to see as a holy place, their holy place. They offered a simulation or destruction to all that ventured into the garden, just like they did with the Kushan. It seems that the Kushan had been killing their own race just as the Kadesh were, and once the last high prediction field was removed, the Kushan fled this place, never to return. Attempts were made to contact the Kadesh as the Kushan moved out of the nebula, but this fell upon deaf ears. Over the eons, the Kadesh had replaced reasoning with religious dogma, attaching mystical significance to collections of dust and gas. They saw this place as paradise 
probably because the previous alternative, when they were part of the migrant fleet, was a harsh life crammed on board an overcrowded transport with little food and low morale. As we see so many times, during times of adversity, reason often goes out of the window, and as more extreme solutions are offered to those who suffer, these extreme voices are seen as a light out of dark places. The Kadesh were no exception, fleeing for the garden of Kadesh, the nebula, as conditions aboard their transport became unbearable. Thanks for watching. I would like to thank the official members of the channel, David Gate, Asoka Ash Letanyo, Swift O Sive, Ministry of Magic Department of Mysteries, Patrick Green, the Wandering Reapers Gaming Community, Commander Omega 88, Alex Simmon, Mol Olsen, and Admiral Deathbane. If you would like to become an official backer of the channel, then follow the link in the description. If you would like to leave a one-off donation and get your name mentioned in a video, follow the coffee link also. Please make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, Commandos 07.